Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Our topic today is artificial intelligence, and we'll be looking at the past and at the future of this very exciting and yet somewhat arcane scientific discipline. With me is Dr. John McCarthy, one of the founders of the discipline of artificial intelligence. Dr. McCarthy is one of the co-founders of the first artificial intelligence laboratory at MIT and the founder of the artificial intelligence laboratory at Stanford University. He is the inventor of LISP, the major computer language used for artificial intelligence, and the oldest surviving computer language dealing with symbolic manipulation. He's also the individual who first conceived of interactive computer time sharing. He is the developer of non-monotonic reasoning, an important new form of logically conceiving of the difficult problems facing artificial intelligence today and he is the 1988 recipient of the Kyoto Prize for his lifetime contributions to the field of computer science and artificial intelligence, something of a Japanese equivalent to the Nobel Prize. Welcome, Dr. McCarthy. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Back in 1966, you wrote an article for Scientific Mer American on the field of information, and you projected out at that time what we might see for the next 20 years. And uh, although there were some errors, I suppose, rather accurately described many developments that we now take for granted and which were at that time rather alien to the population at large. Uh, so you've witnessed a great deal of, of the history uh, and the growth of, of a discipline which has dramatically touched probably everybody's life in the Western world today. And, and you predicted that it would do so. I wonder if we can begin by just having you reflect a little bit on what these past 20, 30 years have, have meant to you personally. Well, I've gotten older. Mm -hmm. um, in, I started my work on artificial intelligence in about 56, although I became really interested in before that in 49 when I was a beginning graduate student in uh, mathematics. Um, I would say that the field has made somewhat less project progress than I hoped, uh, although I didn't have uh, any definite opinion as to how fast it would uh, progress. Um, I think that it had and still has uh, difficult conceptual problems to solve uh, before we can get uh, computer programs that are as intelligent as humans. Mm -hmm. One of the issues that you're working on, in, in, to which most of your life has been devoted, are really tackling these problems, providing the underpinnings so that, the, so that we can ultimately have formal models of, of intelligence that would be equivalent to human intelligence. Well, that's right, and one part of the problem is to uh, develop language in which we can uh, express for our computer programs uh, the facts and reasoning about the common sense world that um, humans have and that is necessary in order to uh, behave intelligently. And uh, I have worked on this using the tools of mathematical logic. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one, one of the striking things that I find in looking at the history of artificial intelligence is that in the early years there, there was some striking progress made on some rather difficult problems like uh, solving mathematical theorems and people thought well because we could do these difficult things we ought to therefore have no trouble doing some of the simpler things that human beings can do and, and yet just the opposite seems to have been the case. That, some of the simple things that any child can do, like recognize speech, have been the most difficult problems for computer intelligence. Well, uh, the idea that one could really do 
uh, difficult mathematical problems, uh, that is, creative mathematical things, uh, was not really realized. That is, it could do some simple kinds of uh, theorem proving and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, now, it's certainly true that uh, dealing with the common sense world has uh, proved to be quite difficult. Uh, what it amounts to is that while humans can do this kind of thing very readily because it's built into us, humans have much more difficulty understanding how it is done in order to be able to make computer programs do it. Mm -hmm.